I'm going to talk to you about video. I've ducked down. There's been two other video presentations at the, at the meeting, at the conference. Have, have you guys seen those? Well, I, and I only ducked in, so I don't know exactly what was said at, at the, the whole thing that was said. But what I saw was people telling you how to use video. But what, they did, what I didn't hear a lot of was how to tell a story. And that's what I'm here primarily to do. I'm going to be skipping around a lot. I'm not really organized. I have some notes, but they're basically just to keep me from meandering too far off track. But if you guys want to ask anything or talk about anything, please feel free to do so. I'm probably the most experienced person at personal finance video, not only at this conference, but one of the most in the United States. I've, I've written and produced and hosted more than 4,000 personal finance videos over the last 25 years. Uh, and I'm currently on 70 television stations. So the difference between me and Gene Chatsky or Clark Howard is that they're richer, but, <laughs> but they're not more experienced at this particular topic. And I think it's awesome that people are starting to use video. You guys are the exact opposite of me. I started in video and then became a writer. You guys are picking up video, but you've, but you've been writers. I didn't know how to write. I mean, I've written, I'd written a book or something, but I'd never written an article until after I've been done video for decades. So I just started my website a few years ago, really, not 2010. At least started making a living off of it. Okay. I've won two Emmys. This, and actually, you know what? I even said that wrong. You're not supposed to say you won Emmys. You're awarded Emmys. So I was awarded two Emmys. I'm on 70 TV stations. <laughs> I can't make this thing move. OK, now my website gets 5 million page views a month, and we have 350,000 subscribers. I mention this because I have this because of video. I'm going to tell you my story. In fact, that's probably the next slide. OK, here's, here's how I started in video. I was an accountant, and then I became a stockbroker. And in 1987, you guys all remember 1987, right? From reading about it in a book? <laughs> anyway, 1987, there was a big stock market crash. I worked for E.F. Hutton at the time. And um, the TV stations were located near downtown where I worked. It was in Tucson, Arizona. So I, I was the closest stock brokerage firm to where the TV stations were, is the bottom line. So they came in and they wanted to interview people. Because at that time, not only did the stock market fall 20% in one day, stock brokers were getting shot, literally, by their clients, you know, there was, people were dying, you know, committing suicide, blah, blah, it was a very dramatic time. And so they came in and they interviewed me a couple times and I went to the local TV station after this was over and I said, how about if I appear once a week on TV and talk about the stock market? And they said, well, how about if you appear every day? Because they had just started morning news. Even though morning news is ubiquitous now, it wasn't that common then local, uh, for local TV stations to do it. So I went in there and I did that every day for several years and then I quit. Uh, being a stockbroker to do television news instead. Because I, I made good money as a stockbroker, but I wasn't really happy with my life doing that. And so I thought what more, it would be much more fun for me to be on television. I'm a Leo. I like being on television. In fact, my friends used to say, I can't believe they're paying you to be on television when you would pay them to be on television. <laughs> and I certainly would have. But anyway, I really enjoyed doing that. And then I started selling my product to other TV stations. So I made what are called packages. And then I started selling those to other TV stations, and then that's how I made my living. So I basically started all over in 1990, 1991. And so this month is my 25th anniversary of doing television news. And, and I've done four stories every week, uh, uninterrupted, for the last 25 years. <laughs> it's, not, it's not really an award ceremony, but... The, <laughs> and, and, you know, by the way, the reason I'm telling you this isn't because I like hearing myself talk, although I really do like hearing myself talk. <laughs> The reason I'm telling you this is because I found a path to succeed. You're not going to have the same path as me, but you will have a path, and you will find a way, and you will be able perhaps to use video to do it or some other way to do it. But if you want to succeed, you will. And there are lots and lots of different ways to do it. <laughs> My website brings in one point, it'll bring in $1.2 million this year, and in 2010 it brought in $300 a month. It's, it's because 
It's partially luck, partially because of video, but partially because I really wanted this to work. And I want to encourage everyone to use whatever path you can find to get whatever dream you want realized, because you can. Okay. I have to sit right next to this thing. I don't know why I even have a remote. <laughs> okay. Why video? Video opens doors for you. It opened doors for me. Here's what happened. Okay, I'm on all these TV stations. In 2008, well, let me back up one step. In the year 2000, I contacted Microsoft, MSN, and I said, you need video for your website. And they said, the last thing we want is video for our website. Video was a big deal around the turn of the century because people started to get broadband, and so people thought it was, gonna, it was like an early adoption thing, but the websites really weren't prepared for it because not enough people had broadband. And so MSN literally said, fuck you, go away. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you I curse a lot when I talk. Oh, another thing too, is there, are there any Donald Trump supporters in the room? Might want to pick a different room. <laughs> Because <laughs> not only do I curse, I can't stand Donald Trump, and I may use him as an example. Anyway, back to my story. So fast forward eight years. Now it's 2008. I go to MSN, and I say, you need video for your website. And they say, oh, yeah, we need video for our website. And Yahoo also. And they, and they wanted video, so I started giving them video. And in exchange for my video, I got 30% of the pre-roll ad revenue. So they're putting a little ad in front of the video. So I make some money doing that. OK, one year goes by. Now it's 2009. MSN comes back, and they say, we want to renew our contract. I say, I, I don't want 30%. I want 50%. They say, we can't give anyone 50%. We'll give you 40%. And at this time, my website is doing, like I'm making 300 bucks a month on AdSense. I got TV news anchors saying, for more information, go to moneytalksnews.com, but they're not coming. I'm just, I'm making no money. The website is an is expense for me, but I have to have it for the TV stations. So M MSN says, well, we can't give you more than 40%, but what we will do, we'll let you write articles. And I said, awesome. What does it pay? They said, nothing. I said, perfect. I'm trying not to do anything but hurt my taxes. <laughs> And I said, why, why would I write, write for you for nothing? And they said, there's going to be three links on each article, and those links are going to drive people back to your website. And I'm like, eh, I don't know. What if they don't? Just try it. Just try it. So I try it. And next thing you know, I got 10,000 people coming to my website from those three links at the end of an article. And then I go to Yahoo, who's also running my video, and I say the same thing. It takes me a year. Let me, let me write articles. So he let me write articles. And, it, and then there was one day I remember in 2000, I guess 2011-ish, I had 200,000 people come to my website in one day from Yahoo. And what are, the, what are all these people doing? Hopefully some of them are signing up for my newsletter. So that's, how, that's why I'm sitting here today. Why I have 350,000 subscribers. Why do, as a matter of fact, as we speak, one of my articles is on the front page of MSN. And that's, they do 160 million unique visitors a month. So I'm getting traffic, and a lot of traffic, from MSN. And I'm also making money from my videos on MSN. But the main thing is, if it weren't for video, I wouldn't be there. Because I'm competing on MSN. There are 80 providers, and they include the Wall Street Journal and CNBC and every big name thing you can think of. They get their, the New York Times, they get their news from everywhere. But at the time, there wasn't a lot of video. I mean, there was CNBC, of course, but the New York Times wasn't doing video. And so it got me in the door. And it can get you in the door, too. Okay. Seriously? Okay, another reason you do video is because it's you. A picture is worth a thousand words. And that's true, isn't it? What's a moving picture worth? You're getting to know me right now, for good or for bad. But Donald Trump is proof that even a complete asshole can find a following. So if you're worried about who you might be on video, don't. I mean, if you're afraid of being boring or stupid, you probably are. But that's okay. 
<laughs> because you can still find a following. And you should. And if you don't, oh, well, I can stop there. Everybody's doing it. Everybody, I'm going to have video on my website. I'm going to compete with you. If you don't have video, then you're not going to compete as effectively. So you, you've got to do it. And what the slide that I bypassed was mo money. You can make money with video. It's hard. Like, I don't make money on my own website, even though I do significant traffic. There's not enough views of my videos to, through YouTube to pay me very much, like 500 bucks, better than nothing. But it costs me more than that to produce that video. So, but when you get on a big site, I'm on AOL, I'm on CBS, Money Watch, I'm on MSN, obviously, and Yahoo. Those pay me enough. And of course, the TV stations actually don't pay me very much, uh, but they do pay something. The TV stations I own airtime. In 50 markets, I own airtime. So in other words, after my story, and you're going to see one of my stories in a minute, I own 10 seconds of airtime that I can sell to a sponsor. Now, that airtime is worth about $100,000 a month because I have so many stations. But the stations themselves don't pay me anything. So if I don't sell that airtime, I don't make any money. But there's still, obviously, money opportunity for video if it's done right. And that's one of the main, not one of the main things, the main thing I'm here to tell you is that if you get, you get one of these rigged like this, that's awesome. But if you sit there and talk on camera, you will never sell that video to anyone, and it will be boring. You have to be able to tell a story. It, it's, you know, the analogy I would make is, supposing that I taught you, you were five years old and I taught you how to type, how, how to use a computer. It's awesome. You used to have to write everything with a pencil. Now you can just use this. But you know what? You're still five years old. And you're just going to bang on this thing like a monkey. You're not going to, you're not going to produce any quality content. And it's the same thing. You, you have the ability to create video at a very inexpensive price. But that video has to be worth a damn. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't know because a lot of people haven't done it before. So you have to figure out why, what's going on on network TV that's so interesting. Why are people compelled to watch some stories and not others? We're going to get more into that in a minute. And by the way, one of the, things, one of the main things I'm doing here today is I'm going to create a new story with you guys in it, if you're interested. So while I'm talking, I want you to be thinking about what's a single piece of advice that you would give to somebody who may be one of your kids or somebody who's starting out or starting over, single best piece of money advice that you can give. I'm going to put you in front of this camera, and I'm going to get that from you, and then I'm going to put you on 70 TV stations with your name and your website underneath it. Now, my question to you would be, how come you're not doing that? You have the same opportunity to create the same story. All these people are walking around here. You've got an iPhone. Why aren't you stopping people and asking them something interesting that you can turn into a, a video that's cool? Okay. Obviously, another reason to do videos is because it's stupid cheap. Uh, not to date myself even further, but when I started, well, forget when I started. In the year 2001, I moved to Florida. I bought my first camera. I used to work out of TV stations because it, there's no way you could afford this shit otherwise. Uh, the cameras that they were using at the time cost $75,000. The lens on the camera cost $10,000. The, the, the stuff to, to edit and create graphics, $250,000. It's a room full of electronics. I bought my first camera in 2001. I paid $20,000 for it used. The lens was four. The edit software, just the board that went to the computer was six. And now, this is better quality. And it's my phone. It's astounding what happened. And that's why one of the reasons everybody's doing video, you can't not do it. And, everybody's, and it's so much better. I mean, my goal was to get out of video entirely before HD came along. Because I'm old as shit, and I don't like watching myself get old on camera. And now, and now 4K. I'm, like my, I'm telling my camera guy, move back. Why are you so close? <laughs> But now, now we, we just the other day, okay, I went, I went from a, maybe it was a $40,000 camera I bought used. Then we bought a brand new camera in 2008 for $6,000, which is still a good camera. It's huge HD. And the, but just the other day, we bought a 4K camera for $1,000. I mean, it's just insane how cheap this stuff is. And the lights 
Everything about it is just ridiculously cheap. The rig, I bought this rig specifically for this, because I actually have a professional guy that shoots for me. But this is $200, everything that you see here except the phone. This was like 80 bucks. This was like 10. This was 10 or 20. And this I had laying around, but it's, you know, 30 bucks. But, and the microphone, I think, was 60 or whatever. But this is really, and this is super high quality shit for almost no money at all. It's just crazy how, how little it cost. Of course, computers are also cheap, but that doesn't mean that uh, they type stories for you. <laughs> well, so let's talk about making good video. I'm going to come back to that. How, how long should a video be to be engaging? Three minutes? No more than two. And I'm asking my son about this, too. I said, what if it's super compelling? They said, put Jesus Christ on camera. He's not going to be there for more than two minutes. <laughs> that's, what, that's what people's attention span is. Talking heads. I mentioned this earlier. If you want to be boring, if you want to have your video picked up by nobody except maybe your mom, stand on camera and just talk. You should never be on camera. No person should ever be on camera for more than 15 seconds. Does everyone know what B-roll is? Okay, so B-roll is just showing something it isn't a human being talking. A-roll is human beings talking and B-roll is everything else. And I'm going to show you some stories that we're going to go over them just so I can show you what I'm talking about. Don't hog the camera. Okay, putting people in your stories is the best thing you can possibly do. Interviewing people. And interviewing people is remarkably easy. But there's some things that I've used over the years that help me interview people. Here's a good story. Last week, <laughs> last week I was reading the New York Times. And the New York Times had an article about how the sea level is rising. I live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I live on the water. And so there's an article in there about how $5 trillion worth of land is going to go underwater and we're all going to die, blah, blah, blah. And the person they quoted in that article was a professor from the University of Florida, uh, who, which is like five hours away from me. And she, they said she was like the foremost authority on rising sea level in the, in the world, or in the United States. I forgot what they said. Anyway, big authority. So I wrote this woman an email. I found, you know, I just Googled her, got her email at the, at the University of Florida. And I sent her an email saying, can I interview you? She said, sure. And I said, well, before we go you know, to the trouble of arranging everything, let me ask you a quick question. Would you spend or invest a million dollars in a waterfront property in South Florida? And she wrote back, I swear to God, like a 14-year-old texting, ha, 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 no. <laughs> Guys, this is a huge story. I mean, around the corner from my house, somebody's building a $10 million mansion on the water, and I've got the foremost authority of sea level rise in the United States going, ha, 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 no. I would not build a property on the water. This is a big story. Okay, so now, she's at the University of Florida five hours away from me. Am I going to get in my car and go up there and interview her? No. Why? Because the University of Florida has interview uh, facilities. I pay them $150, she goes into their studio, I get on a cell phone, ask her questions, she answers them, they send me the video, I put it in my story, which I will shoot on the beach, right? Or in the center from Waterfront Mansion that's being built. <laughs> Not hard to do. Would she have taken your call? Sure. Also, of course, I could have interviewed her by Skype. I prefer not to do that because I think Skype looks a little trashy, but hey, networks are doing it, and so I could do that too. There's a lot of people out there that will take your call, and you can ask them, and, and they will, they're interesting. There's interesting people, and they will talk to you. I, just, I feel like just throwing this thing on the ground. Use the keyboard. I mean, I think I should. How do you, can you just do like plus arrow. with a keyboard? Enter or right arrow or space bar. Oh, okay. Awesome. Okay, when you're interviewing somebody, you want, it, you want that also to be short. And so when I'm interviewing people, I will say, okay, tell me that again, but shorter. You know, another thing I'll do is I'll say, tell me that again, but act like you give a shit about what you're talking about. <laughs> because a lot of time, one time I, was in, I lived in Cincinnati, and a guy won $5 million in the lottery or something, some big lottery win. And he was a machinist. 
And I called him on the phone, and I'm like, how did it feel to win the lottery? He goes, awesome. But you know what? I love my job so much. I get up at 5 o'clock every morning, and I go machining all day. And I don't care. I'm, I'm going to take, I'm going to keep going to work because I love this shit. And I'm like, awesome. Would you talk to me on camera? Sure. Come on over. So I go over there, and he's sitting on the sofa in this little house. And I said, what did it feel like to win the lottery? And he said, that was nice. Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, you, you guys still going to go to work? I guess so. I mean, he went, it's hard sometimes to drag things out of people. And, you, and there are lots of ways you can, one of the things you do, it's probably next on here. How does it feel? How does it feel? Do you like Donald Trump? No. How does it feel to know that some idiot is about to get in the White House? How does that feel? How does it make you feel? Situation normal. <laughs> No, how does it feel to not know you're able to pay your bills? How does it feel to be financially free? How does it feel? And sometimes I'll ask people how does it feel, and they'll tell me what they think, and I'll say, no. How does it feel? What are you feeling? Why do you want to be free? What does freedom mean? What's it like? How does it feel to sleep in an underpass? How does it feel to know that your kids don't have enough clothes to go to school? You know? Make people say things how they feel, and it's really interesting. How does it feel to be successful? And you, know, you can, you can make, turn that any number of ways. Now, here's another thing I do. I'll say, look, before we roll the camera, let's go over this so you're comfortable. Now, pretend like we just met. We're at a bar. We're having beers. And I say to you, how does it feel to win the lottery? OK, so I go through this whole thing. OK, you ready to do the interview? Well, we just did. It's over now. <laughs> I've been rolling the whole time. And in, in, in the days back when we had tally lights on cameras, what would happen, my camera guy would be setting up, and I'd be talking to the person, relaxing them, and he would just do this. He'd touch my shoulder, letting me know he was actually rolling. The tally light was turned off so they wouldn't know. And, so the, and then the interview would be over before they thought it happened. So getting people to relax is something that's uh, important. And also, you can make people mad, too. Like, let's say you, you hate Donald Trump. <laughs> this is a recurring theme in my, in my talk today. And, and I say, how do you like Donald Trump? I don't like Donald Trump. I think Donald Trump's a genius. Why wouldn't you like Donald Trump? And the next thing you know, you're going to be going like, what the fuck is wrong with you, Donald Trump? And now, bang, there's my bite. I got you excited. And the way to get somebody excited is just take the opposite approach to whatever it is they're ta whatever you're talking to them about. Some people think that that's stupid, whatever it is they're saying. And then they'll go, well, no, it's not stupid. And then, you know, and then the next words that come out of their mouth are going to be your bite. OK, being creative. I, I like this is another video we're going to see in a minute. I like using analogies. Um, you're going to see a video in a moment where I'm using credit scores. What, a, what an easy thing to do an analogy about. Now, you could sit in front of a camera if you want to, and you could say, credit scores range from 350 to a perfect 850. <laughs> the way to have a good credit score is to pay all your bills on time, extend your credit limits, lower your utilization ratio, or you can go to a fucking bowling alley and show a credit score, which is what I'm going to show you in a minute. So you can use analogies to help people understand things that are complicated. You can also stop people on the street and make all kinds of great stories. I just told you at the end of this thing, I'm going to have you guys tell me what you think is your best piece of money advice. That's stopping somebody on the street, and it can make a compelling story. Here's a true story. OK. 70% of women think about money more often than they think about sex. 70% of men think about sex more often than they think about money. What do you think about more often, sex or money? Money. What do you think about more often? Right here. Money or sex? Money. Money or sex? I think about sex. Thank you. Here's the girl I'm going to ask for a drink later. <laughs> but you see, you can stop, you can literally walk right out that door and ask 10 people, men and women, what they think about sex, and then you can show this study and you could have these bites, and you would have a compelling story, wouldn't you? I just made that up about the survey, by the way. 
<laughs> no, actually, I, I actually did do that story like 20 years ago. Money Magazine, like literally it was the magazine at the time. There was no internet. They did, they did do, had some survey, but I forgot what the actual numbers were, but there wasn't real survey. Can people sign a release? Oh, yes, you should always get people to sign a release. Now, what you can do is you can say, tell me your name when camera's rolling. <coughs> tell me your full name, spell it for me. Do I have your permission to use your, your image, your likeness in, in any media that I choose to? It's not as good as a release, but it's better than nothing. And I, to be honest, I've, I've done lots of stories and not gotten releases, but it's not a good idea. Okay, at the end of the day, what we're talking about is we're, going to talk, we're talking about telling a story. And I'm going to show you a couple of stories right now, and they're going to look like things that are hard for you to do, and they may be. But there's, there's no shortage of examples of these things. I've got a thousand videos on my website, but not just me. The New York Times, NBC, there's a billion people out there, a billion uh, videos out there that are compelling news stories that you can watch and you can emulate to the degree that you're able to do so. So let me, now I'm going to back up a whole bunch and go to a couple of... Oh wait, yeah that's the one I wanted. Now I'm going to have to take my mic off and put it here because we couldn't get that to work either. Denmark, I have Christmas ornaments in Australia, I have a mermaid ball in a remote village in Alaska, which is pretty amazing. For Jackie Allard, pottery is a passion. Yeah. She's been doing okay. it for years, but the internet has enabled her to find buyers for her craft worldwide, quit her corporate job, and live the self-employment dream. I can see myself as an easily attainable goal, making $100,000 a year. One thing that helps Jackie find customers is sites like Etsy.com. It's one of many sites that turn crafts into cash. Online stores like Etsy harness the power of the internet to hook up home-based businesses or small businesses with a worldwide audience. Now, that doesn't guarantee that you're gonna make a kilning, but it is a great way to get that business up and running. Of course, there's no free lunch. If you wanna run a business, you're gonna have to maintain an inventory, fill your orders, keep your customers happy, keep your books, it's not nothing, but if you want to learn to pound out some extra cash from a craft you love, here's a great option. Just jump in and do it. It's not that scary. Some people are so afraid to take a stupid picture and just put it on the internet. It's really not that difficult. Selling your crafts is one way to make extra money. I have a lot more ideas waiting for you. Just go to moneytalksnews.com and do a search for making extra money. For Money Talks News, I'm Stacy Johnson. Okay, now there's a couple things I want to point out in that video. Did you notice at the end she's like, just go out and do it. That's because I said, I can't do this. People can't do this. You, no one can just do this, go out and just do this by themselves. What would you tell those people? Because this woman was like a mouse. She was very, very difficult to interview. And so now notice the way I started the story. We're talking about telling a story. Here's a simple way. Here's how news is all put together. Almost every story you ever see may look complicated, but it's just as simple. There's a problem. Hopefully, the problem is stated by somebody that isn't you. It can be stated by you, but hopefully somebody else, st you're starting off a story, and somebody's saying, geez, I wish I could get my credit score higher. Or, or maybe it's a happy story like this one. I can't believe how much money I was able to make just by going on Etsy. It's amazing. Okay, so the story is starting, it's, you're grabbing someone's attention by using somebody else if you can. Then, if there's a problem, you're solving it. Maybe an expert solving it, or maybe you're the expert solving it. That's what I tend to do. So I'll say, like, you know, I'll have somebody saying, gosh, I can't buy a house because my credit score is too low. And then I'll say, well, there are ways you can raise your credit score. You can do this, this, and this. So I'm the expert. But you, either you're interviewing, you've got, somebody has a problem, somebody solves the problem, and then you bring it all together at the end. The problem is now solved. Gosh, I'm going to have a higher credit score now. I'm not going to be, I'm going to be able to buy a house. So it's like any story, right? It's like a movie. It's like a book. There's a problem. There's a, there's a solution. Happy ending. Or not happy ending, whatever. Compelling ending. And so you can do this yourself by using B-roll, 
by interviewing people, and by emulating what you've already seen. There's a lot of stories like this out there, and you can see, how did they start off? They started off with a person. Then what did they do? They, they got a solution to the person's problem. They interviewed an expert. Then what did they do? They said, go to my website for more information. That's what they did, and that's what they all do. Okay, I'm going to show you one other thing. And then we're going to talk about how to sell video. Okay, here's another. That's what I was talking about with analogy. Whoops. Here we go. As a proprietor of a bowling center, my bowling score is very important. But I have to admit, my credit score is way more important than my bowling score. If this guy thinks credit scores are that important... So what, what did I do? I went, to, I went to a bowling alley, and I said, can I, can I shoot in here? Will you talk to me on camera? And he was like, sure. But did you notice, you heard him talking, but you saw him bowling. Okay, that's called a VOSOT, it doesn't matter. But the point is, it's real, I don't want to open a story with somebody's face. I want to hear them, and I want to see their face, but, but first I want to watch them doing something. And this is really a natural. Uh, one time I did a story on health insurance. Oh, this is another thing you can do, too, to do stories. Okay. You call up the company. Let's say, here's a series I've done a lot of. I've done 10 stories like this. How to make extra money <coughs> with Etsy. Do you wonder where I got that woman? I got her from Etsy. I called up Etsy and said, do you want me to do a news story? On your website, find me somebody who uses your thing, who uses your product, who uses your app, who uses your service, who's been to your store. And they, let them do all the work. And they will. And so they find me these people in my hometown, and I go interview them. But one time, I, did, I was doing a story on temporary health insurance. This was long before Obamacare. This was 15 years ago. And guess who they found for me? A guy who was a drag racer. Wow. So I went out on a Friday night to a drag strip for temporary health insurance. You know, it could not be a stupider, more boring story. And I'm like, if you don't have insurance, that's a drag. I mean, it was like so much fun. <laughs> it was like the screaming cars behind me. And I was like, yeah, this is as good as it gets for a consumer reporter or a financial guy. Anyway. Okay. Let's keep watching this. Most widely used credit score, the FICO score, ranges from 300 to a perfect 850. To get yours out of the gutter as fast as possible, we asked for some tips. From FICO. People think, oh, if I miss a payment here, if I miss a payment looks. there, it's not a big deal. But since um, payment history is 35% of the FICO score, it is critical that you pay your bills on B -roll, time B -roll, every B -roll, time. Right? Paying on time, not one way it. to improve a score, but not the fastest. Want to speed it up? Step one is to check your credit history. It's free at annualcreditreport.com. Look for errors and dispute any you find with the credit reporting agency. Then free up some credit by paying off a few small balances. That alone will help you pick up a few spare points. Step three, lower that utilization ratio. Do you think That's that was actually me bowling that? Compared to your available it was. Credit. There are two ways you could do it, either pay down debt or increase your credit limits. Then there are things to avoid. Closing old accounts, applying for new credit, and asking for a lower limit. All could handicap your score. Bottom line, if striking a better deal on a mortgage or other loan is something that might be this actually wasn't your alley, pretty good. then what you want to do is work on that credit score, because it's going to make a difference. And I've got more tips going to help you. Go to moneytalksnews.com and do a search for credit scores. For Money Talks News, I'm Stacy Johnson. Okay, so that's, there's some elements in there. And I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to say, look, I've been doing this a really long time, and I have somebody doing a lot of stuff for me. I know what I don't want you to do is go, oh, I can't be a talking head. I'm going to stop doing video because I can't do that. I don't have enough time. It's not worth the effort. Don't do that. Just learn, understand that some elements, whatever you can do, whatever B-roll you can use, whatever person you can interview is going to make your video better. You don't have to do this or what NBC Nightly News is doing, but try not to just sit there on your sofa and talk on camera. Are you creating your own B-roll? I'm sorry? Are you creating your own B-roll, or is there a place you get it on the back? We're, we are, we're usually shooting our own B-roll. You can buy B-roll, but it's expensive. So we're usually shooting our own. But you know, this is what's really great, too. I, I like to do dollar store. Be the best things to buy at the dollar store, the worst things to buy at the dollar store. <laughs> it's done really well for me on MSN. And you know what we used to have to do? Call the dollar store and say, like, can we come in? And they'd say, no. I mean, a lot of places won't let you in. But guess what? 
they can't stop me now because I can use my fucking phone. <laughs> well, it used to be this, you know? I mean, you can't really hot, you can't really gorilla shoot when you've got a big camera on your shoulder. But now it's like, I mean, you can't do stand-ups in there. But I, I've literally done this. I've, I've, you know, gone in there, gotten B-roll with my phone, and then stood in, on the sidewalk in front of the dollar store and done my stand-ups. Swear to God, two million streams on MSN. Took me 10 minutes to do the story. <laughs> and this is, what, this is what's off, awesome, too. You know, with MSN, with almost anyone, you can say, well, I can't do the dollar store story because Stacy already did it. No. If it worked, do it again. They don't care. They're feeding the beast. You know, I'm not talking about just MSN, but in general, your own website. I started republishing stories, I guess, this year. Nobody cares. Nobody even notices. What, I did, what was the most popular story I did on you know, Friday, September 23rd of 2015? And I just put it up this morning. Nobody knows. If they, if, I mean, not 350,000 people are getting my newsletter. Not one person has ever said, I've seen that story before. Because they probably have seen that story on my website, someone else's website. They don't care. So find something that's really popular and do it yourself. Put your own spin on it. Stacey, so what are some of the best ideas you have for breaking into local television? Like, I'm going to go there. Oh. I'm actually going to go there next. I was going to talk about once you, because you know, one of the problems, and one of the reasons I was able to succeed in video is because I'm creating video for television, and Kiplinger, I'm talking about when I started, they're doing talking heads. Well, MSN is obviously going to prefer my video to Kiplinger's. And the reason Kiplinger was doing that isn't because they're stupid, it's because there's not enough money in it. I'm already making money from TV stations, this is just gravy for me. But if you're going to start from scratch, it could cost money to do something, and then who's going to see it? You know, the few people that are on your website? So you've got to be able to sell that video. And you, know, you're not, you may not be able to sell it on MSN, but you might be able to. I mean, look, if you create a video, let me tell you something. If you did women think about money and men think about sex, you could show that to a website and they might just take it. <laughs> now, it might be hard for you to find out who to show it to, but that's what LinkedIn's for. And you can also, so you can go to a website and if it's, if it's good and you can get somebody to watch it, so maybe you, do, maybe you do three videos a week and two of them are talking heads, but every now and then you focus some energy. You go out and you do something interesting, controversial. You stop people, you know, and you do something cool. Take that video, and hopefully it'll be evergreen, so you can use it again. But take that video and try to sell it somewhere. I mean, even if, even if all you're doing is getting your video on Business Insider, which isn't just, I mean, that's a great thing to do, and then you're getting links back to your website. You wrote an article around that. You know, you've got attention, you know. And so just trying to do that. Another thing, local TV. I will guarantee you. You want to know how to get on local TV? I've been, doing, I've been selling to TV stations for 25 years. Here's how. Do their job for them. That's all you have to do. Call, you get a producer on the phone, which isn't that difficult to do. Get a morning producer. I mean, it's not like calling a news director or something. And it, it depends, obviously, it depends on how large your city is. If you're from New York, it's going to be more difficult than if you're from Des Moines. But you get a producer on the phone and you say, I'm Stacy Johnson. I'm, I'm uh, from Money Talks News. You've heard of us, right? No. You haven't? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Okay. I went out, and I stopped 10 people on the street, and I found out that more women are thinking about money all the time, and men are thinking about sex all the time. This is an awesome video. You won't believe it. You've got to see it. And she just heard money and sex in the same sentence. She's going to run that video. She's going to look at it, and next thing you know, how would you like more of these videos? I can do this for you. And then you can go out and you can create more videos. You, and guess what? If that person says no, there's two other stations in town at least, if not five, depending on how large your city is. And somebody, and, and in the morning, these guys are doing news from 4 o'clock in the morning. Let me tell you something. They are dying for content. They have to have it. And there isn't any because nothing happened at 4 o'clock in the morning in Des Moines. And so when you say, I've got sex and money video, they're going to go, hmm. Maybe I should take a look at that. And, and you know, next thing you know, you're getting quoted because you're an expert. 
And if you're not an expert, you shouldn't be here. And if you are an expert, you need to tell people that. Same thing, and now newspapers have websites that run video. And now credit unions have websites that need video. And once you get your foot in the door, which is what I did, and that's what this whole thing is about, then you can start writing articles, you can start doing other things. And you could, you could even do a, a course on Udemy. You know, you could do almost anything you want to do. So you said that you can get paid, you would sell them the video, you would sell them the series, how does that work? You mean for TV? Correct. I would, I would just try to get on the air first. Okay. Uh, I would not try to sell it to them. They will not have the budget. The person you're talking to, the producer, whoever it is, will not be able to write a check for that video. Okay. This is just getting your foot in the door. Well, you, ultimately, it depends. I mean, ultimately, you can ask for money. I ask for money when I, when I, I ask for either money or airtime, and you could do that. Did you see, did you notice at the end of my news stories, I said, for more information, go to Money Talks News? Mm -hmm. Did I really give that story away? I did, but I'm getting traffic back. And what I'm doing when I'm going to a TV station is not only do I have that at the end of my story, I also ask for 10 seconds of airtime you didn't see it because I, I don't have it on this video. But there's a 10-second commercial at the end of my story that says, want to make more and spend less or something like that? Uh, go to moneytalksnews.com. Subscribe to our newsletter. only takes seven seconds. Subscribe now. I own that airtime. I could sell that to Fidelity if I wanted to. And, but between times when I'm trying to sell it to them, I use it for myself. And so I, I'm not asking for cash, and I would advise you not to do that. But you, what you're trying to do is get exposure. <laughs> 